So if KSPs can actually indicate to you something about the solubility of a chemical, well, uh, then you should be able to kind of compare them, right? Uh, for various chemicals to be able to determine their relative solubilities or, or compare them against each other. Which one will actually um, uh, form a precipitate first? or which one will actually be the chemical that reaches the point of saturation before the other ones when you're putting in certain quantities of chemicals and, and testing to see if they dissolve. Okay, <laughs> well, the thing is, you can compare solubilities and KSP values, you just gotta be careful. Now, here's where you have to be careful. Now, don't look at this last one yet. We're gonna use that last one in, in just a second. Look at these first three, and if I say to you, take a look at the KSP values for each of these chemicals, which of these chemicals has the lowest solubility? Now that means this, which one is the, the least uh, dissolvable, right? So the thing is, which one of these chemicals really doesn't like to dissolve? That's the least soluble. So which one of these has the, uh, uh, again, the, the uh, lack of ability to dissolve in solution the most? <laughs> well, each one of these chemicals here does this, and this is why you can directly compare them to one another. Do you recognize that whether you're doing AGCl here, or you're doing the AGBr, or the BASO4, when they dissociate into their ions, here's what you get. Ag positive, Cl negative, Ag positive plus Br negative, and over here you get Ba2 positive and SO42 negative. When each of these chemicals dissociates, it's going to make X of this and X of this. X of this and X of this. X of this and X of this. One to one ratio. They all do this. Now think about it. If you write the expressions for every one of these chemicals as Ksp equals the concentration of something times the concentration of something, each of these is going to be X's. They're going to be the same. So what you're going to get is x squared equals the Ksp, so x, which is the concentration at the point of precipitation or at the point of stopping dissolving for those chemicals called the molar solubility, you will get a molar solubility value for each of these that is going to equal the square root of the Ksp. So now look, oh and by the way, the one that has the highest concentration is the one that's going to be able to be the most soluble. So the one that has the least concentration, the lowest value of X, is the chemical that has the lowest concentration before it hits the point of saturation. So that means you're the least soluble. So what are you going to do with all of these numbers here? Well, really, you just take the square root of the KSP and compare them to one another, right? So the deal is, the square root of that is going to be about, well, listen, the square root of 10 to the, just do, just do the exponents. The square root of 10 to the negative 10 is going to be 10 to the negative 5. 10 to the negative 5, 10 to the negative 6 and a half, 10 to the negative 4 and a half. Which one actually is the one that has the lowest number here for x? Well, it's going to be the AGBR. Because at that 10 to the 6, negative 6.5, that's the lowest molar solubility. So, well, okay, guy, if you just took the square root of each one of these, well, don't take the square root of them at all and just compare the KSPs. Right. So the deal is, for these guys here, since this one has the smallest KSP, that's the smallest number of those three, 10 to the negative 13, smaller than all of those, then that means it's got, it is the least soluble chemical there. But you can only compare KSPs when they dissociate into the same amount of ions. Because here's the deal with the last one. If I said, now, of these four, who's the one that's going to be the most soluble? Well, now, look at this. What about this CrOH3? What does that do? It dissociates into chromium ions and three hydroxide ions, which means at equilibrium, you're going to get X of this, but you're going to get three X of this. Now, think about that. That means that the KSP is going to equal, right, this concentration of CR, which is X, but this concentration cubed. So it's 3X cubed. And that means that the KSP is going to, sorry, the KSP is going to equal, if you look at that, it's going to be, 
That's 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. So that's 27x cubed times that, which is 27x to the fourth. Which means this. You have to take the KSP to find x and divide it by 27 and take the fourth root of it. Yeah. See, now that will then legitimately compare the solubility of this one to the others. Now look, what would the solubility of that be? Well, I know what this divided by 27. Okay, but you know what that's going to be? That's going to give you a number that's going to be around 10 to the negative 32. Okay, good. 10 to the negative 32, and then you take the fourth root of a 10 to the negative 32, and you actually get a 10 to the negative 8, right? Yeah, you do. So here's the deal. If you looked at that number, see a lot of kids do this, right? A lot of kids, a lot of people do this. And they say, ah, oh, you got the KSPs of those four. Which one's the least soluble? That one there. Oh no, look. That one actually has a molar solubility when you calculate X of 10 to the negative eight. And this one was 10 to, oh, no, hang on, 10 to the negative five, 10 to the negative 6.5, and 10 to the negative 4.5. So, okay, yeah, right. <laughs> the point is, this one is still the least soluble at 10 to the negative eight. Great, but you know that if this was 10 to the negative 21, and I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna, or 10 to the negative 23, let's say. I'm cheating now, I'm cheating, okay? But here's the deal. If this was 10 to the negative 23 as a KSP value, if you took that and divided by 27, get 10 to the negative 24, and then took the fourth root, you'd get 10 to the negative, 10 to the negative 6, right? And then all of a sudden, the one that was 10 to the negative 6.5 here, would, would you take the square root of that, that one would actually be the lowest solubility compound. So now look, you understand the idea. If they dissociate into the same amount of ions, compare their KSP values to determine who is the least soluble, the one that has the lowest KSP, the most soluble, the one that has the greatest KSP. Which one is the most soluble when you actually have to dissociate into a different number of ions? Calculate what X is, and you can do a rough calculation in your head. Most of the times, that's all that's needed to be able to determine the relative solubility.